Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining us today. And in today's Cephalobon contributor video, I have the pleasure of going over what I think is one of the best releases in a long time from one of my favorite niche brands. This is of course Amouage. The perfumer is Cecile Zerokian. and the fragrance is called Silver Oud. I'm excited to tell you all about this fragrance and also what you can do in order to win a travel spray from the brand. So make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin this video and I tell you my thoughts on the brand new 2021 release Silver Oud by Amouage, what I think of it, if I could compare it to anything else, so on and so forth, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like fragrance reviews, top 10s and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on the bell and give this video a thumbs up if you like this type of content and by the end of this video if you took something of value from this review. So of course of course, Cecile Zerokian is one of my favorite perfumers ever. It goes without saying. She is responsible for hits like Ani by Nishane, Tango by Mask Milano, and many, many others. I don't even want to get started because there's a laundry list of creations for which she is responsible. But here we have a fragrance that is one of the most daring and one of the most exciting releases in a long time. And this has smoke, it has Cipriol, also known as Nagarmoda, it has birch, it also has has some animalic tendencies as well with a little bit of castorium and if you would like to enter for your chance to win a travel spray from the brand all you have to do is shoot on over to cephalobon.com I'm gonna leave the link down below in the description box I want you to read through the article leave a quality comment and you must be a registered reader as well and then just be sure to check back over to cephalobon.com on the date that is mentioned so you can see if you are the lucky winner. Good luck, everyone. I really hope you get a chance to try this by winning the travel spray because this is definitely one of the boldest, most enigmatic and complex fragrances that I have smelled. And I think it's one of the most exciting releases of 2021. I'm so happy to have this in my hands, figuratively speaking, but let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So in the opening of this perfume, it opens up so bold, charismatic, and enigmatic. You are going to get a burst of smoke and woods. And the reason for that is because there's Cipriol, which kind of gives it like this herbal, aromatic, and culinary vibe. But then you also get birch. Now birch conveys a sense of smoke as well. So it opens up really smoky. It has some animalic tendencies on account of the castorium as well. And so it's kind of smoky the way interlude for men is smoky. Not not as smooth and floral as like Interlude Black Iris, which I also think is an amazing fragrance, but I'm referring to Pierre Negrin's Interlude for Man, which is a few years old now in the blue bottle. It's often referred to as the blue beast here in the community and for very good reason. So that fragrance with the amber and the resins and that smokiness, you're going to get something similar here because you're going to find vanilla. And I think the vanilla is also contributing to the amber accord. And I think there's more to the vanilla in terms of that exotic balsamic resinous sweetness that you get in the base. So I personally pick up on a little bit of labdanum. It gives it that exotic resinous vibe. There's a touch of sweetness in there. I think most of it is predominantly coming from the vanilla, but that smoke is kind of lingering over the entire thing like this pleasant cloud. And if you are not a fan of smoky fragrances, you got to stay away from this one because this is a bad boy or bad girl, rugged, dark, almost gothic composition. And I absolutely love it for that reason. Now, the thing that I think really distinguishes this fragrance from other smoky fragrances are the animalic tendencies. Sure. There's cedarwood and there's patchouli, and there is this green slash woodsy undercurrent, but what you're going to get predominantly and primarily from this fragrance is the smoke and the animalic tendencies with a touch of sweetness. So let me tell you something. This happens to a lot of fragrances that I am in love with. Interlude for Men by Amouage, Patchouli 24 by Le Labo, and there's also one by Profumo Roma where I give it a chance to settle down and then the sweet balsamic resins come out and it's like one of the best smells in the world. 
that's what happens with this fragrance. I feel like a lot of people will spray it on, they're gonna get that smoke in the opening, and they might feel a little bit too daring while they're wearing this one. Give it an hour. Once this starts to dry down, the balsamic richness comes to the fore. You get more of a sneak peek at that vanilla and some of the more amicable elements of the base really start to be brought out. And all I can say is that Cecile Zorokian absolutely knocked it out of the park with this one. Now, I also wanted to take a quick moment to talk specifically about the oud that is in this fragrance. With a name like Silver Oud, you think to yourself, what kind of an agarwood is going to be found in this fragrance? What is the role that that agarwood note is going to play? And of course, there are a lot of synthetic varieties of oud that are a little bit on the more clean and polished side of things. And then of course, you have the animalic varieties in, um, in perfumes. Now, in the case of this fragrance, it definitely veers in the animalic category. And not just because the oud itself is natural, natural and organic and evocative of that aroma, but also because of the castorium that's in here. Now, this is not the only woodsy ingredient in here. You have guaiac wood, you also have cedar wood, and guaiac wood is a little bit brighter. And so I think of a name like silver oud, and it's almost like you take a metal object and it reflects a little bit of light. And so there's this gleam or a glint off of it. And that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from this is that there's agarwood in here and you can tell that it's providing the infrastructure structure of the fragrance, but it's not the solitary woodsy note. And it shares the stage with its smoky brethren and, uh, you know, its woodsy cousins, the guaiac wood and the cedar wood. And so while the oud is kind of sitting at the heart of this composition, it is that smoky nuance that you are going to get predominantly in the opening alongside with the patchouli and the resins and of course that vanilla in the base, which is really creating an agreeable conclusion to the fragrance. And something that's not as daring and as extroverted as the opening, which is very loud and in your face and rambunctious, but in the best way possible. And so in consideration for the oud that's being used in here, it is one that's a little bit on the daring side, but I know oud lovers, this is exactly the type of oud that they're looking for. They're not looking for something quiet, tame, shy, introverted, recalcitrant. They're looking for something that is very out there, talk, uh, talkative, excuse me, if I can use some figurative adjectives, but personally love the oud that's in here. This is an amazing release by Amouage and one of the best releases from any niche brand that I've tried in a long time. But of course, you have to be a fan of these really dark, rich, bold, gothic, smoky fragrances. This is for the fall and winter, especially the winter. So right when it starts to get cold out there, there's a bite in the air. I can see somebody wearing this really comfortably with just a few sprays. So very well done, exceptionally well done as a matter of fact. I am a fan of this. I'm gonna be wearing it quite conservatively, however, maybe two or three sprays, but I certainly plan on wearing this one as the seasons start to get a little bit colder out. And also this comes across smelling very rich, very opulent, very exotic, but also very enigmatic and not a confusing blend, but you can tell it's a mysterious and intricate blend. So very happy that I'm in possession of it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, I took a look at the uniqueness and the overall smell. And while there are some other smoky fragrances on the market, Market, Cipriol and Birch. This one is unique in the sense that it has the animalic components, it has the vanilla, it has the amber, and then it also has enough of that gentle patchouli in the base to kind of give it this green undercurrent that makes it a little more friendly. But of course, the smoke is still the pervasive note that you're going to get from this fragrance, but super unique. But it is a little bit on the daring side. And so, if you are used to designer aquatic fragrances, uh, Versace Pour Homme, Bleu de Chanel, Dior Sauvage, this is in a completely different wheelhouse, the complete other end of the olfactory spectrum, if you will. Longevity, 12 plus hours. One of the longest lasting fragrances in my entire collection. The projection on this one is also very, very good. Two sprays and it will last the whole day. I actually sprayed this one <laughs> in my car two weeks ago. I was getting impatient. I got the box, I got in my car, I opened it. I did one spray to the chest in my car. It's been two weeks, I can still smell it on my seatbelt in my car. The performance on this is nuclear, the projection, everything about it, this will linger the entire day. Huge cloud, one of the best performing fragrances uh, that has ever been released, not just in 2021, but 
beware. This one will perform incredibly well. And in terms of the versatility, I think cold weather is really where this one is gonna shine. I wouldn't wear it in the spring or the summer. And also this is the type of fragrance that I think has some pizzazz to it. So I would feel inclined to wear this one formally. I can't really see myself wearing this casually. And also it's a bit of a daring fragrance. So I don't know if I would necessarily wear it to the office, but when you definitely wanna make heads turn, when you definitely wanna stand out, you don't wanna smell like everyone else, perfect for that situation. In terms of the presentation, I personally love it, this, the flask shape of the bottle, the cap, the box, everything about it. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you are looking for something that's a real home run, something that's incredibly complex, if you are a fan of smoky fragrances and you just want something that is not going to smell like anything else on the market, you want to smell different, you're a fan of smoke, Oud, of course, which is the namesake of the perfume, but also that animalic touch. I think you got something really special happening in Silver Oud, an amazing agarwood based fragrance and one that I highly recommend people check out. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for watching. This was my review of Silver Oud by Amouage. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to support this channel by subscribing to it if you took something of value from this review. And also, make sure to enter for your chance to win uh, a travel spray from Amouage, cephalobomb.com. Links are going to be down below. Thank you for watching. Love you all. We'll see you soon. Bye.